As your Remix application grows and you have increasingly complicated forms, you may want to move to a schema-based validation instead of these if statements. In this video, I'm going to show you how to validate your Remix actions with Zod. There's lots of different options for validating your actions. There's even some plugins you can use and there's even plugins you can use that use Zod. But I'm just going to show you how to do this from scratch. So the first thing we need to do is to add Zod. So I'm just going to say yarn add Zod and I'm using the Indie Hacker starter pack here. While Zod is installing, I'm gonna come over to this utils package here, and this is where we're going to create our validation function. So I'm gonna export a function called validate action, and this is going to be an async function. This function is going to take two arguments. The first argument is going to be our request, and then the second argument is going to be our schema. So request is going to be of type request, and then schema is going to be of type Zod schema. And VS Code isn't going to import Zod schema for us, so I'm just going to manually import Zod schema. So import from Zod, and we're going to import Zod schema. Because Zod schema is just a type, we can say import type Zod schema. And then I'm going to split the window here. I'm going to come over to the login form and we can import Z from Zod. So import star as Z from Zod. And then we can create our schema. So I'm just going to collapse the loader here. And I say const schema is equal to Z dot object. And this is just the login form here. So you can see that we only have two fields. So we have four the email, password, a redirect to, and a remember. And remembers when you click this little button here, remember your login. We're going to create a schema with Zod object, and then we're gonna pass in some properties in here. So I'm gonna say email is z.string.email. And we should put some validation in here as well. So I should give this a required error of email is required. And then a invalid email error of invalid email. And then for password, I'm going to say z.string.min. And I'm just gonna say that you need a minimum password of six characters. So I'll give this an error of password must be at least six characters long. Remember is going to be an enum. So I'm gonna say z.enum. And then this is just an array with one property and the property is on. And then I'm going to make remember optional because if you have it unticked, then it's not going to be defined. And then if you have it ticked, it's going to be defined as on. Then I'm going to have this redirect to, and this is going to be z.string. And then we can default this to slash notes. So I can say default slash notes. Okay, so let's call our validation function here. So I'm gonna say, const equal to validate action. And then I'm gonna pass in the request and I'm gonna pass in the schema. So our validation function is going to return our form data. So I'm gonna get our form data from here. And then I'm going to remove that. And it's also going to return errors. Okay, so let's do our error handling first. So I'm just gonna say if errors, then return and then we can just return one of these JSON fields here. So return JSON errors, and then we wanna return a status of 400. Okay, so we're also just going to be able to get email and password redirect and remember straight out of our form data. So let's do that. Const object equals form data, and then we can get our email, password, redirect, to 
and remember. And then we can just remove all these fields here. And now that we have our validation, or we will have our validation, we can remove all this sort of manual validation here. So we can remove the if statement there, these two if statements, and then we need this one here because this is going to say, verify the login. And if the user is incorrect, then we need to return an error. So this isn't really input validation. Okay, so let's go work on our validation function. So the first thing I want to do is to get the form data. So I'm going to say const form data is equal to await request dot form data. Then I want to get the properties out of the form data. And then I'm basically just going to run them through our schema.path. So I'm going to say const body is equal to object dot entries form data. Let's console.log this body here. And I can come over to the Remix server that we have running. And let's go try this out. So I'm gonna say t at t.com, pass in a garbage password, and I'll click remember. And we get a really funky error here. But we have our body, which is an empty array, which doesn't seem right. And instead of object.entries, it's object.from entries. So let's try this again t at t.com, some garbage password and remember. And now we have our body here. So we can run this body through our schema. So to do this, we can call schema.pass and then we want to pass our body. But schema.pass can throw an error. Let's try this out. And I might actually just return the body here as form data. And then I'm just going to return errors as an empty object. I'm going to say t at t.com. And then I'm going to give it a short password to trigger the validation errors. We can log in and you can see here that we get a desired error. Schema.pass has thrown an error. So we need to catch that error. Let's move this into a try block. We're going to catch the error. We're also going to get our form data now out of our schema.pass. So I'm going to say const form data is equal to. And now we can return form data and then errors as null because we don't have any errors. If you're wondering why I have two variables called form data here and if that's going to create a problem, I'm probably better off removing this variable form data here and just calling it await request.form data inside of object from entries. But it wouldn't cause an error because these are scoped differently. So this is going to be scoped to this block. And because this return statement is run inside of this try block, it's going to use this form data variable instead of the original one that we had at the top here. Console.error our error. And our return here is actually needs to be in the error block. And I'm going to say t at t.com password. Actually, I'm just going to make this one character. And we have our issues here. And it looks like our validation is working. Let's go try it with some validation that passes. So t at t.com and then password one, two, three, login. Cannot do structure property email from form data as it is undefined. Okay, so that's not good. And I can spot the issue already. Validate action is an async function, but we're not using a wait here. And so we're just going to be returning a promise and that's going to fix our TypeScript errors as well. Let's try this again. T at T .com, password D3. And invalid email or password because this user doesn't exist. So this is all working correctly. Let's try the error case. And you can see that it doesn't do anything. It doesn't show us any errors. And that's not really what we want. We want to be able to see the errors on the form here. We're logging out this error here. And if we have a look at what the JSON needs to be, it needs to be errors. And then we have a key of email. So this is the field. And then we have the message. But that's not what our errors look like here. So we just need to do a little bit of formatting on the errors from Zod. And they will match the errors that the UI expects. So you can see in the UI, 
it's trying to get action data errors email. So we need to follow this pattern here. So we need to return action data and then an errors object and then an email and the email needs to have a message. So I'm going to say const errors is equal to e.issues. And you can see that we don't have issues here on this. And that's because error is type unknown. So we can say const errors is equal to e as zod error. Now we can remove this variable here and we can say our errors that we're going to return is equal to errors that are now typed as zod error. Errors dot issues. And now we need to call dot reduce. The issues is an array you can see here. And we're going to get the accumulator and the current value. Then we're going to have a function and we're going to return an empty object. So I'm going to get the key of the property. So I'm going to say const key is equal to current dot path. And then we just want the zero value. So you can see here the path and you can't see what it says in here, but it's going to have one property and that is going to be password. So this property here is going to be password. And next we're going to say accumulator key is equal to current dot message. And then finally, we just need to return the accumulator. Okay, so let's try this, t at t.com, use a weak password, and you can see here, password must be at least six characters long. Okay, so this validation function here works, but you can see that we have one type error here, and if we hover over our form data, it's just typed as any, and our errors are just typed as an empty object or null. So we can obviously do much better than this. So the first thing I want to do is I want this validation action to be a generic. So I'm going to put my brackets here and I'm going to call this action input. So now I'm going to type the form data as action input. Remove that console.log. Down here where we have Zod errors, you can see that Zod errors is a generic as well. We have this T and its default is any. So we can put in our action input here. And next we want to type our accumulator. So I'm going to come up the top here and I'm going to say type action error is equal to a partial. Actually, I'm going to remove the partial because it's going to be easy to see what this actually means. And I'm going to say this is a record and we want a key of T. So action errors needs to be a generic as well. The key of T and then the second property is going to be a string. So what this is doing is we're going to pass our action input as T. And so our action input is going to be things like email, password, all that. And so the key is going to be email and password. And then this string is going to be the error message. Because not all fields are going to have errors, however, we need this to be a partial. Okay, so let's go use action errors. And we can use this on our accumulator here, action errors, and then we can pass in action input. Next, we can type our key here is just a string or a number, but it's actually a key of action errors. So I can say as key of, actually, sorry, it's a key of action input. Okay, so if we come back over to the login form, you can see that form data now is unknown. And errors here is a partial of record never and string. And that's because we need to parse our generic in here. So we could say something like email is a string. And now we have email here on form data, but we don't wanna to have to type all this out. We would just rather infer this from the schema. So let's say type action input is equal to z dot type of type of schema. Okay, so now action input is going to be a type that we've inferred from our schema. So we can type our validate action here as our action input. And now we have all of our fields and our form data and our errors are correctly typed as well. Let's go do the registration form. So I'm going to come over to join here and we're going to do the same thing. So above our action, I'm going to say const schema is equal to Z 
and I need to import Z. So import star as Z from Zod dot object. And I'm just going to copy all this. Uh, we don't have remember. We do have a redirect and we just want to redirect to the index page. Now we have our schema. I'm also going to copy the action input type. And then I'm going to say const object is equal to await validate action validation action. This probably should just be called validate action. It's probably a better name for it. Rename that here. I'm going to pass in my request and the redirect. I'm going to get back the form data and errors. I'm going to remove this form data here. I'm going to say const is equal to form data. I'm going to get my email. Actually, let's infer our action input first. And then this is going to help us get the properties out. The email, and I need to pass this schema in, not the redirect. Email, password, redirect to. We can remove all this. Now we can remove all this validation logic. And we need to say if errors, return JSON errors status 400. And that is the validation done. One thing to note about this approach is that because we've returned the form data from schema.pass, we're going to honor things like default. So I can show you what I mean by this. If I console.log form data, and come over to sign up. I can say t at t.com and then I can inspect element here. And I'm just gonna put in a P. Now I can copy this curl request, so copy this curl. And then I can come over to Postman and go file, import, raw text, paste it in here, import it. So I've unticked redirect to, and I'm gonna put in a password that's gonna pass the validation. So password one, two, three, I send this along. And you can see that the redirect has defaulted to the backslash here, even though we didn't put anything into the form data. So that is how to add Zod validation to your Remix applications. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and make sure you subscribed so you get notified whenever I release a video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.